Greetings everyone, I'm Stefan, and with all the new changes to Economy Installers 3.0, I've decided to make a planet build guide, uh, which uses those mechanics to our advantage to make sure that our planets are as well built up and as efficient as possible. Let's begin. For the sake of demonstration, I'll be using a typical Commonwealth of Man Empire, which has no specific bonuses to any building stuff. Obviously, if you're going to be playing with an empire with something like let's say, uh, functional architecture, which adds more building slots, or something along those lines, uh, your experience is going to be different, and you're going to have to adjust how you build your planets. However, the typical scenario is going to go like this. Get a new colony, you colonize it, and you get between 1 and 2 pops, depending on whether or not you have the expansion tradition, which allows you to get additional pops on the new colony. Those two pops are going to be employed in the colonist job, first and foremost. However, in 3.0, you don't actually need to have pops employed as colonists until you get to about 5 pops. With an overall buff to designations in 3.0, the colony designation has received a massive buff, granting it plus 10 amenities on your planet. This means that on really early colonies, you can actually unemploy your colonists and make them work some specialist job such as metallurgists or consumer goods producers. This is very useful early on, and especially if you want to build a colony on a very low habitability world. The extra amenities you get from the colony designation will mean that if you keep your 0% uh, habitability colonies uh, at 4 pops, you're going to be just fine and you're going to be able to uh, grow more pops and just resettle them on your other planets. However, if you're building up a colony normally, you won't really have to bother with this and uh, so you can basically forget about it. Once you get to 5 pops, this colony designation will go away and you'll be suffering massive amenities penalties. We can see right here that once the planet reaches 5 pops, our stability is going to tank because of a lack of amenities. We are going to have to re-employ the colonists, and uh, so unless you have an alternate way of making amenities, you will have to use these colonists for the time being. As a job, colonists are rather inefficient however, and ideally you want to get your planet up to 10 pops, so instead of having colonists, you can have administrators on your planet. Administrators will produce plenty of unity and amenities, and are far more efficient than having uh, colonists running around. You will also want to get to 10 pops in order to upgrade your reassembled ship shelter uh, over to planetary administration. Overall, going for any planetary capital upgrades is very good because it will not only provide extra housing and amenities, it will also provide more jobs and more building slots. Building slots in 3.0 are obtained in a variety of ways, uh, but this is probably the easiest way to get them, besides just going ahead and building up city districts, which you certainly will want to do uh, in order to open up more building slots for stuff like science and unity. However, for the time being, while we are a very low pop colony, we are going to want to just go and build up whatever resource that we want to primarily produce on the colony. In 3.0, specialization is very powerful. As I mentioned before, they buffed planetary designations, and now stuff like Mining World, Agri World, and Generator World give you a plus 25% bonus to whatever job they boost. If you combine it with something like a Mineral Purification Plant or an Energy Grid, you can get up to plus 50% production in a specific resource. And so if you have three specialized worlds producing one resource each, it'll be far more efficient than if you had three worlds producing general goods. Because of this factor, you will ideally want to occupy one of your first building slots with some sort of specialization building, and another building slot with some sort of growth building. Generally, you'll be able to unlock uh, robot assembly plants relatively early, and so spamming that on all your planets is going to give you a massive boost in terms of growth. Alternatively, you could also go and do organic pop assembly, although that is going to be far harder to achieve, uh, because you will either need to be a hive mind and use spawning pools, or be any normal empire and just go for a biological ascension. However, you should keep in mind that clone vats are mutually exclusive with robot assembly plants, and generally I would go for a robot assembly plant over a clone vat, just because a clone vat is extremely expensive to upkeep. But anyways, once you finally reach 10 pops, you'll want to upgrade your capital building as soon as possible. It is relatively expensive, but it's going to provide you with some serious bonuses. Once your planetary capital is upgraded, you might be left with some specialist unemployment. Uh, to fix that, you just unemploy all of your pops, they'll adjust themselves, and uh, you should be able to re-employ them and fix the problem. 
Uh, this happens because for whatever reason, uh, the game thinks that workers are better suited to be rulers, and so they advance first, and then the specialists who used to work the colony jobs, um, you know, they just kind of stay unemployed or become the enforcer. Uh, enforcers are ultimately there to reduce crime on your planet, and at low population, you will not be dealing with much crime at all. Even if we don't have a governor, uh, we'll be still sitting here at 7 crime, and until a crime reaches 30, it is not a problem whatsoever. Generally, at low populations, crime can only be a good thing. If we are at above 10% crime, we have the option of going for a crime lord deal, and this crime lord deal will not go away even if we have zero crime uh, after we choose the deal. On this planet, we cannot go for a crime lord deal because we don't have enough crime. Uh, but later on, we should be able to go for that, and the 10 stability it gives is very worthwhile. At this point in time, you have two primary options. Either you continue specializing on uh, whatever you decided for your raw resource, or you can go into specialized resource production. Now, on relatively low size worlds, such as this one, uh, I would probably primarily focus on producing whatever raw resource and allowing other bigger sized planets handle the research and the alley foundries. However, we can show off what you can do on this planet as well. By building up some city districts, we'll be able to obtain more building slots, and then we can use those building slots uh, primarily to either build research labs, continue specializing our planet, or building some refineries. Exotic gas refineries and other buildings that produce strategic resources should not be underestimated. For example, if you produce some moats, you can use those moats to upgrade your mineral purification plant to actually give extra minor jobs for your mining districts. On this planet, we're going to go from two minor jobs per district to three by using certain resources to our advantage. Now that we have a mineral purification hub and we have plenty of extra mining jobs, we can basically just forget about the planet and let it grow for a while. Our next big milestone is 20 population. Once we reach that number, two things will become very important. Amenities, which you will notice uh, start to go down significantly, especially on low habitability worlds, and a mechanic that is relatively obscure in 3.0, which is carrying capacity. I have done a full guide video on carrying capacity, which you can check out in the top right corner. But basically what it boils down to is you want to have plenty of carrying capacity so that your population grows faster. In our case, with 20 population and 30 carrying capacity, we just don't have enough and our population is starting to slow down. What we want to do is build up some city districts to provide more housing and potentially clear blockers to open up districts. As you can see, building up those city districts did help out significantly and clearing out some blockers helped out significantly as well. Generally, you get carrying capacity by two ways. Either you build up more housing, uh, housing directly counts towards carrying capacity, or you have open districts. Now, the amount of planet capacity you get per open districts does depend on planet type. On normal planets, you get four capacity per open district. On stuff like Gaia's and Hive worlds, however, you get six. So keep in mind that some planets are simply better than others when it comes to growth. But anyways, on this planet, we can see that the planet capacity is 44, and you can see that our growth is starting to increase instead of being decreased by the carrying capacity. This is where larger worlds with more open districts and more potential housing are a lot better than smaller planets. A size 16 planet is more on the smaller side, and you will not be able to achieve a lot of uh, extra growth from having extra carrying capacity. However, on larger planets where it's easier to get carrying capacity, you already might be seeing plus 3 base growth from pops. It really depends on the planet and how much resources you have to spare uh, to upgrade city districts or to build up housing uh, via building slots. Uh, building up housing through building slots is honestly not that bad of an idea, and on this planet, if we built a luxury residence, we can both increase pop growth and fix our amenities issues in one fell swoop. However, I would recommend building luxury residences only in situations where you have spare building slots. On this planet, it might be better to instead go for something like a hall theater to fix our amenities issue once and for all, and then also start going for research. Ultimately, research is power, and the more research you have, the better. So we can spend a few district slots, get some building slots, and spam out more research, 
And research is ultimately going to be a resource that is uh, going to be reinvested into our empire uh, for more and more bonuses. Going for technology is extremely strong, and you can spam research labs basically anywhere. Having dedicated tech worlds is not particularly worthwhile, uh, because you don't really get any extra science. You only get reduced upkeep, and uh, you can deal with the upkeep of scientists by just building up more consumer goods. And with this new system, it is relatively easy to do so. On certain planets, you will want to build up industrial districts, and using those industrial districts, you'll produce consumer goods and alloys. Make sure to have some planets dedicated to it, uh, such as for example your capital. If you're lacking consumer goods or alloys, you should build up districts on there, uh, because ultimately your capital is going to be a zone where you balance your economy. If you're lacking something, build it on your capital, and ideally you want to specialize your other planets. After you've built up your planets some more, and possibly have upgraded some of your buildings uh, to have more jobs, for example, you can upgrade research labs over to research complexes uh, for the price of some gas, you will unlock another upgrade to your planetary capital. This upgrade to your capital will allow you to build some very specialized buildings, such as for example a Ministry of Production, which is great on planets specialized in alloys or consumer goods. Or alternatively, you can build a research institute which increases your researcher output, uh, something that we certainly want to have on this planet where we have plenty of research going on. So let's go ahead and upgrade the building. We can see that our amenities problems are going to be fixed once again, and we're going to get more building slots. So let's go ahead and build that research institute, uh, which is going to really help us out in our specialization of science. Generally, you will want to have a mix of a decent amount of worker jobs and a decent amount of specialist jobs. Although, of course, you can have planets that are specialized primarily towards mining, for example, or primarily towards uh, having to do with building slots. However, in either of those scenarios, you will either have too many building slots, such as with a planet which is primarily focused on raw resources, or too few building slots on a planet which is primarily focused on specialist research. The only two planet types where you would really want to go for a specific specialization is uh, with a forge world, where you're trying to produce as much alloys as possible, and you really just need to specialize all the industrial districts on alloy output instead of also producing consumer goods, or on planets which are bureaucratic centers. You will generally only need one of these planets in a playthrough, uh, but specializing on bureaucracy is nice on that one planet because it will make them quite a bit more efficient, and it's very hard to modify the production of bureaucrats otherwise. In fact, if you have a low habitability world, it will not actually affect the production of bureaucrats, and so having a bureaucratic center on some really bad low hab world is probably the best way to go. But anyways, back to the planet. In our situation, at 40 population, we have two primary options. We can either continue growing the planet, uh, which would require us upgrading more buildings, and uh, dealing with ever-decreasing planetary growth due to uh, our planetary cap being relatively low, at 62. If we continue to develop this planet, uh, eventually our pop growth is going to stop, and overall, this planet won't be growing as much population. This can be beneficial. Ultimately, if you have no growth, you will not have to worry about any population on this planet, and you can just focus on developing other planets. However, if you're playing the game efficiently, you will want to have as much growth as possible, and what you will simply want to do is resettle the new population over to other worlds. On a size 16 planet, that is exactly what I would do. I would leave the planet at around 40 pops, and in fact, if we uh, unemploy our clerks and make sure everyone is working as either a miner or a researcher, or having some other important job, uh, we can make it so any new pop that grows here is unemployed, and they will automatically try to move to a planet uh, with employment, housing, and amenities. On average, it'll take about a year for this new pop to resettle to another planet. Uh, this process can be sped up, however, by, for example, being a democracy, or by going for a special starbase module called a transit hub. You unlock this technology by researching level 2 uh, hyperdrives, and this will increase chance of resettlement by 100% for any planets within the system. The more pops there are, the higher the chance of moving out, and so this 2 population should eventually go down to 0. 
There we go, the human has resettled. And actually, the robot will not be able to resettle, because they have migration controls enabled. You might have to resettle robots manually, and if they are synthetics, it will cost influence uh, just as much as normal pops would. But anyways, when it comes to planetary development on this planet, uh, it is going to finish right here. However, on a planet that is much larger, we can get quite a bit more population, and uh, on larger planets you will generally want to produce stuff like industrial districts, or science and stuff like that. This planet, in particular, is a perfect candidate for Ecomonopolis, so let's see what we would do with that. Yeah, this is what Ecomonopolis would look like. We're at 100 pops, and we're not even breaking a sweat when it comes to housing and planetary capacity. Our population is going to be booming, and even at 200 population, we're going to be just fine, we're going to have plenty of jobs, and uh, more pops will be welcome. A similar thing can be said about Bashid Worlds and Hive Worlds. Uh, being able to just spam out as much of a district as you want is really powerful, and uh, you will be able to carry a lot more pops on the special sorts of planets than you would on normal planets. With 3.0 and its carrying capacity mechanic, some planets will simply be much better suited for carrying a lot of pops than others. It is very difficult to build up a planet like this to have 80 pops, let alone 200. In 2.8 it will be possible, and you'd be primarily limited by housing, but in 3.0 you're primarily limited by carrying capacity, and because you want to get as much growth on your planet as possible, you are really encouraged to spread your pops across multiple worlds, instead of focusing them on a few particular planets. But anyways, this will about do it for the planetary side of things in 3.0. Other things to note is that edicts, such as for example uh, capacity subsidies, mining subsidies, and farming subsidies, are incredibly overpowered. Capacity subsidies will give you an additional 2.5 energy per technician, and uh, that is quite a lot of resources. I would highly recommend running these edicts if you can afford it. If we take a look at our policies tab, we can see another change in 3.0. Civilian economy and militarized economy will actually give you a plus 25 in exchange for a minus 25. Uh, in 2.8, it was a minus 25% in exchange for a plus 15. And even in those situations, it was sometimes worth it to take militarized economy or civilian economy. In 3.0, it's probably your best bet to be on militarized economy basically all the time, unless you're trying to build up your economy uh, without having a navy. In which case, civilian economy is the way to go. Otherwise, I have to mention that starbase modules have been buffed dramatically. For example, hydroponics bays produce a base of 10 food, which is modified by your different technologies. So in our case, by building a hydroponics bay, we are getting 18 food per month extra. Uh, this crazy amount of production means that it is very well worth it to build up uh, new stations simply to have those hydroponics bays. If you're a Gestalt Empire, starbase modules become even better. You can make solar panel networks, which will produce a base of 6 energy per module. And uh, so, for Gestalt, building up economic stations is very, very good. And in the early game, uh, as long as I can afford it, I always try to go for these. But anyways, that about does it for today. In the near future, I'll also be covering how to build up habitats in the most efficient way possible in a live stream where I also play as Void Dwellers. Void Dwellers has received some serious changes due to the new growth mechanics, and so optimization of that is going to take a whole stream to explain, and hopefully I figure out some great strategies for that. But for the time being, I'll leave you guys with a tip. You want to build up your habitats with one habitation district per uh, production district, and you want to keep the population on your habitats relatively low, around 23 pops at max. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.